Hi, in this video I'll be explaining engravings, Lost Ark's most important and unfortunately most complicated endgame system as it relates to your character's power and playstyle. This video will cover engraving points, engraving levels, general versus class engravings, engraving sources, ability stones, malice engravings, imprints, and seal books. There's a lot to cover when explaining engravings, so this may be a lengthy video. So I'll be sure to leave timestamps in the description to help you guys find the various topics. Before I begin, I'd like to remind you that if you find this video helpful, please leave a like, as it lets me know that these guides are effective in explaining the various game systems, while also helping other players to find this information, and it really helps with the growth of the channel. Engravings are effects which are granted to your character through equipping gear with points in those engravings. Access to engravings is unlocked at level 50. Engravings are activated through the accumulation of points on equipped endgame gear. These points are special attributes granted by your endgame accessories, ability stones, and imprints. I'll be going over ability stones and imprints later in the video. Points for each specific engraving are added together to represent your total points in the engraving. These totals indicate which level of the engraving to activate on your character. You can see your current engravings by opening your character window with P and clicking the engravings tab. Each engraving has three levels, with each level increasing the effect of the engraving. Each engraving level requires the accumulation of five points in the engraving. Engravings need a minimum of five points in order to activate level one, 10 points to activate level two, and 15 points to activate level 3, which is the highest engraving level. It's important to know that these levels are only granted when you get 5, 10, and 15 points, meaning that if you're below these level thresholds, the engraving will not be activated for that level. This also means that there's no benefit to going over the maximum of 15 points. I'll explain the importance of not passing 15 points when I go through engraving sources and balancing engravings. Engravings are separated into two major categories. These are general engravings and class engravings. General engravings are engravings with effects that can be applied to any class. These include things like increased attack and movement speed, increased defense, increased critical strike chance, and so on. Class engravings are a bit different. These are engravings that are specific to a class and primarily affect the class's identity. Each class has two class engravings, which often completely change the playstyle of the class. Most classes have to choose between one or the other, with a few classes being able to benefit from the effects of both at the same time. I'll be uploading a short supplementary video demonstrating how a class engraving can drastically change the playstyle of a class, using my soul fist as an example. I'll leave a link to the video in the description box below. Before I begin the breakdown of engraving sources, I'd like to make a few things clear. Engraving points are accumulated based on your currently equipped accessories, ability stones, and imprints. This means if you change any of these, your engravings will be affected. Engravings on items are both random and permanent. This is true for both ability stones and accessories. Anything they drop with will always be on the item. All ability stones and accessories of epic rarity or higher will have a malice engraving. These are general engravings that apply a negative effect to your character. I'll speak on these a bit more after accessories and ability stones. Malice engraving points are displayed in red. You can equip two rings, two earrings, and one necklace. Please take note of the names of the rings and earrings when sourcing your accessories as you cannot equip two with the same name. Accessories can drop with 1 to 3 random engravings with random point allocations, offering you more engravings as you go up in rarity and higher maximum possible engraving points as you go up in tier, allowing for more total engraving points available to unlock more or higher level engravings. These can include class engravings and up to 3 points in malice engravings. Accessories from content that drops items such as Chaos Dungeons and Guardian Raids can only drop the class engraving for the class you're currently playing as. Ability Stones provide two random beneficial engravings which cannot include class engravings, along with one Malice engraving. 
Ability Stones have 6 to 10 slots representing the maximum possible number of points for each engraving which can be granted, with higher rarity stones offering more slots. These slots must be refined before the ability stone can be equipped. Refining is effectively a process of rolling weighted dice on each slot with the hope of success in the beneficial engravings and failure on the malice engravings. Each success provides one point in the engraving represented by the slot and you have to refine all slots before the stone can be equipped. Refining can be done by the Ability Stone Smith found in every major city. Ability Stones can be a massive source of engraving points if refined successfully. Malice engravings are represented by the red engraving points which can only be granted by accessories and ability stones and work with the same point and level system as normal engravings. But instead of applying an effect that makes your character stronger, their effect makes your character weaker. There are a total of four malice engraving effects. Reduced attack speed, reduced movement speed, reduced attack damage, and reduced defense. We look at managing these when we get to balancing engravings. It's important to know that there are some beneficial engravings that also have malus side effects. A few examples of these are Grudge, which increases the damage you deal to bosses, but also increases the damage you take from them, or Precision Dagger, which increases your critical strike chance, but also reduces your critical strike damage. These side effects are a part of the normal engraving and are not applied via red engraving points. Imprints are simply learned engravings. Once you have learned an imprint, you can freely equip it to either one or both imprint slots in your equipment window, directly providing you with points in the engraving based on the level of the imprint. These can be changed for free and at any time while not in combat. You can see your imprints by pressing Alt plus I. In this window, you can see your learned imprints, as well as progress on the various imprints you're currently learning. This is also where you choose imprints to equip, Imprints can be equipped by either dragging them into the imprint slots or right clicking and alt plus right clicking to send them into the first and second imprint slots respectively. Imprints have four levels to learn, each level increasing the number of points granted when equipping the imprint by three. That means a level one imprint applies three points, level two applies six, level three applies nine, and level four applies 12. You can learn imprints through the use of seal books. Seal books come in four rarities which correspond to the four imprint levels. Each imprint level is unlocked by using 20 seal books for that level. Before a seal book can be used, however, you need to unlock the imprint for the previous level. This means you need to unlock level one of an imprint by using 20 green seal books for that imprint before you can start to use the level two books of that imprint. There is no requirement for using green seal books. You can use a seal book by right clicking. Learned imprints and imprints in progress are shared among all characters in your roster. Here you can see I have used 19 of the 20 seal books necessary to unlock Adrenaline Level 1. The seal books also display your progress in learning an imprint. Once I consume the last seal book needed, I will now have access to Level 1 of the imprint. Additionally, you can see here that I have unlocked my level 1 class engraving and equipped it twice, supplying me with 6 points. If I use the required number of seal books to reach level 2 of the imprint, you can see that my engraving points have doubled as each imprint now offers 6 points instead of 3. Seal books can be obtained either directly or via selection pouches and are awarded from a variety of content in the game, such as endgame dungeons and raids, island questline completion, and various NPCs, with repeatable content normally rewarding random books and one-time rewards normally offering pouches. Pouches come in two varieties offering either a selection of general engravings or class engravings, never both, so be mindful when choosing. As a side note, you can purchase bags containing seal books from the Chaos Dungeon Merchant. This can be done by exchanging the crystals you get from Endless Chaos Dungeons and can be done in both T1 for 20 bags containing level 1 books and in T2 for 20 bags containing level 2 books. These bags offer you a choice of either a general engraving pouch or a class engraving pouch. These bags are one-time purchases per account in each tier. When applying engravings, 
The goal is to accumulate as many points as necessary in the beneficial engravings you want in order to achieve your desired engraving level without going over while trying to avoid accumulating enough points in the malice engravings to activate their effect. This is done by acquiring accessories and ability stones with a variety of malice engravings so as to avoid accumulating too many points in any one type. The maximum possible engraving level is 3, which requires 15 points to activate, and points above that have no effect and are wasted. At each tier, there is a maximum number of possible engraving points that you can obtain, meaning that any excess engraving points applied over the maximum needed are taking up space that could be applied to other engravings. Though malice engravings are generally undesired, you can overlook their effect based on your specific situation. For example, if you're playing a support whose role is to buff, heal, and shield allies, a malice effect that causes reduced attack power is less of a hindrance for you than if that same malice effect were on a DPS class. Or perhaps you're the player who has mastered all boss mechanics and dodges all projectiles in endgame content then maybe you wouldn't care about the reduction in defense since you already avoid taking damage. When acquiring engravings, please be mindful of the class you are playing and the role you want to fill, and prioritize maxing engravings which help you excel in your chosen playstyle. And now we've come to the end of the video. I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope this video shed some light on engravings and was helpful to you on your way into Lost Ark. I'd like to thank you again for watching and I wish you safe travels on your journey through Arcasia.